Hey everyone, just trying to top up a bit of information about Arrhenius theory and specifically modified Arrhenius. Uh, this one could be a little choppy. I've got uh, dinner and all kinds of stuff going, so hopefully you find this helpful and I'll try to make it as complete as possible as we go through. Um, in any case, here's uh, kind of where we come from. Arrhenius was helpful in telling us a little bit about the behavior of solutions by saying if something produces ions in solution we would probably see that it's conducting and let's try to explain how that happens. So all of these original observations would be true about uh, the original Arrhenius theory. It would say stuff like hey uh, ionic compounds like sodium hypochlorite still actually dissociate in water. In fact that's a very highly soluble substance. And so we would still want to show the behavior of this substance breaking into its ions because that's actually how it would behave in solution. It would turn out then that this substance could be further classified as a base, but modified Arrhenius theory eventually gets us to the point where we can talk about that. To finish looking at the original Arrhenius theory, we can talk about molecular compounds being substances that will basically uh, stay intact because of the strong covalent bonds that are holding them together, but they will not themselves uh, break into smaller pieces. So when you take something like, let's say, uh, methanol, and in its pure state it's a liquid, you can definitely put that into water, it has great solubility, will dissolve and really just form aqueous methanol mixture. So you have something happening where the methanol and water will interact really well, but uh, you will not see it break down any further than that. A solution in the first case would be evidenced by the fact that the conductivity would be pretty good, where in the second case uh, the conductivity would be poor. So looking at the behavior of acids first, we would want to make reference to the table that's present in our data booklet. And this is obviously an incomplete list, but it shows really an important breakpoint, which is where hydronium is shown right in here. We have the distinction between the six strong acids that we would consider for this course, and then all the weak acids, which continue on to the next page. So what Arrhenius would say is that uh, acids are substances that are going to react with water to form hydronium ions in solution. This happens both for strong acids and weak acids as far as we're concerned and uh, what we can do is show this behavior quite simply. Uh, let's have a look at uh, our strongest acid on our list which is HClO4. What separates modified Arrhenius apart is the fact that water becomes involved in these reactions. The consequence of this interaction is that hydronium ion is produced where previously we just said it was hydrogen ion. There's some compelling theory as to why that happens and we're not going to get into that in this video. So that's a little bit about strong acid behavior. Notice that the reaction arrow that I've chosen is a singular arrow. Strong acids have a tendency to ionize completely in water and that's why that arrow was chosen. If we contrast that with a weak acid, so we can choose HNO2 for example, the reaction by and large is going to look the same. The distinction here is now that we are paying attention to whether it's a strong acid or a weak acid, uh, knowing that this is a weak acid, appears close to the bottom of the list on the side, I'm going to show the behavior of it being a weak acid by showing an equilibrium arrow. This implies only a portion of the nitrous acid actually goes through this reaction to produce hydronium. Uh, more about that is explained in Chemistry 30, so I will leave that explanation for then. A consideration to make is that certain gases uh, can also create acids, but they need to go through a two-step process. And the gases in particular that are responsible for this are carbon dioxide 
sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, and we also consider the NOx gases to do this in part, but those reactions are a bit clumsy, so I'm not going to include that as part of this. Uh, let's take uh, sulfur trioxide for this example. So the first step to this reaction is that we're going to take the sulfur trioxide and react it with water. That's actually going to produce the acid that we're dealing with. Now, at this level of chemistry, we probably don't have the ability to predict whether this reaction is, in fact, uh, complete or partial. Uh, my suspicion is that in most circumstances it would be a partial reaction. So maybe just to be kind of clear about it, we probably should have that as an equilibrium arrow. But we don't have the ability to predict that stage of the reaction. What we can do is look at the fact that H2SO4 appears pretty high up on our list as a strong acid. So when it further reacts with water, we're going to see it making hydronium to a great extent. That's why the singular arrow is there. And then we'll have a balancing entity that we can predict like that. Uh, one of the things that uh, was mentioned in class is the fact that the balancing entity uh, can be predicted by looking at the column adjacent to the acid formula. So wherever you've seen uh, these particular acids on the list, you'll notice that there is a base formula that would set up kind of next to it over on the side here. And if you actually consider that in all three of these examples that I've shown, um, you can just kind of go across to look at the formula for the base. Uh, that would be the easiest way to predict these substances being produced. Okay. Uh, in the future, you're going to learn about Bronsted-Lowry theory, which frankly is uh, a more uh, useful way of predicting the uh, balancing substance, but we're going to wait for Chem30 to do that too. Then uh, the behavior of bases in part ends up being the same as what we saw. Our strongest base is hydroxide. There are stronger bases, but we don't have to worry about them. And ionic compounds containing hydroxide can actually still dissociate, uh, acting like strong bases. So quite simply, if you had sodium hydroxide, very much like the original Arrhenius theory, we would predict that that would break apart and form hydroxide ions. And the sheer fact that hydroxide is produced during this reaction tells us that this is a base. So that part of the theory doesn't change. However, the theory does permit us to uh, have additional substances not containing hydroxide that would actually be uh, able to produce hydroxide in solution if we're told that they're basic. A key one that we've tested in the lab is ammonia. And this being a weak base, because it appears on this list above hydroxide, then we will predict that it, to a small degree, makes some hydroxide and then a balancing entity. In a manner similar to what was stated before, if you actually look on the table and you find your base on the list, if you go to the adjacent column, which would be over here, you can find the balancing entity, which in this case would be NH4. Okay, uh, maybe just one more example. So earlier on, I told you about sodium hypochlorite and that something about NaOCl is actually basic. You can see that OCl is in fact on the table. And having told you that it's basic, we can write an equation that looks like this. In both of these cases, we've uh, been able to identify these substances on the basic side of our table and use the 
adjacent column to figure out the uh, balancing entity, which in that case would be the HOCL. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that modified Arrhenius theory uh, does not permit you to actually predict the behavior of these substances. So you'll have to be told what the substance is that's reacting. In this case, it could be the NH3 or the OCL. So either of those would be stated as the substance that's there, or in the case of the OCL, you might be told NaOCL and have to do the extra step. Uh, cause a reaction with water, and then you would also have to be told whether the results of this uh, mixture are acidic or basic. Okay. Uh, Bronsted-Lowry theory ends up having more predictive power. Again, we're saving that for Chem 30. Hope you enjoy.